Welcome to the Ultimate Marvel Snap Deck Guide for Dracula. Today's video is going to walk through a number of cards that synergize very well with this powerful card. It's going to take a look at a deck list that you'll be able to build, even if Dracula is your very first Series 3 card. And then it's going to expand into showcasing a variety of options that you can work towards playing Dracula in as your Marvel Snap collection grows. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. Starting with Dracula's text box here, Four energy, zero starting power, but at the end of the game, discard a card from your hand and Dracula has its power. Dracula taking on the power or whatever it's discarding means that it wants to be paired with lots of exceptionally large lads and there is no lad in Marvel Snap larger than the Infinite, 20 points worth of stats, but normally having the big drawback of you can only play Infinite if you didn't play a card in the previous turn. This means if we have Dracula in play and we can get our hand entirely empty sans Infinite, not only will we be getting 20 stats into play, but we'll also be getting those 20 stats into play for just the four energy that it costs to play Dracula out. Another card that is quite fantastic with Dracula in an almost unintuitive manner is Apocalypse. Six energy, eight starting power. Apocalypse gets plus four every time it's discarded while being put back in your hand. The thing that's key to note about Apocalypse and its interactions with Dracula is that Dracula doesn't actually take on Apocalypse's power until Apocalypse has been returned to your hand and made larger. This means if Dracula is the very first thing to discard Apocalypse, your Dracula will still be getting 12 stats and that number can scale up to be much, much larger if you have other discard synergies in your deck to pump up Apocalypse with first. As we work our way down the list of powerful cards in Marvel Snap that Dracula is happy to discard, Red Skull definitely comes to the top of the list, having 15 stats for 5 energy, but typically having a detrimental ongoing effect of giving enemy cards at his location plus 2 power. When we discard Red Skull to Dracula, we effectively mitigate this downside while also keeping Dr Red Skull's impressive stat line. The final card I'd like to call out as synergizing well in Dracula decks is zero. One energy, three power with the on reveal, remove the abilities of the next card that you play. While zero obviously doesn't work well with Dracula specifically, what zero does do is provide a key amount of redundancy in the games where your Dracula doesn't show up or in the games where you draw multiple cards that you would want to be discarding to Dracula. Things like Red Skull, while they have impressive stat lines, generally have detrimental effects associated with them and Dracula discards them to get around that effect and Zero wipes that effect away as another tool to get those big stat lines on the board without their downside. Our first deck list here is Dracula Kazar Swarm. This deck list has a lot of nice redundancy in it. Let's go ahead and give you the rundown of how it works. Dracula with Infinite is an obvious synergy that we called out earlier, but this deck list is also playing Sunspot as one of the one drops we can swarm the board with as a means of organically playing Infinite out in the games where Dracula doesn't show up. In the games where Infinite doesn't show up, we also have America Chavez as a six drop that we're guaranteed to draw on the final turn that we can discard to Dracula for nine points worth of stats. Something that's very important to play in almost every Khazar deck is definitely Armor as well as occasionally Cosmo. These are both cards that provide counterplay against Killmonger, which can frequently ruin a deck full of one drop state. A very common end game play pattern for this deck is we'll have an Armor Path with three one drops being protected in it, and then we'll have Dracula. Dracula plus Kazar in another path, being able to win that with the powerful stats that Dracula will provide. One final thing to note when looking at this deck list is that Blade is a card that can kind of help us get our hand clean at the end of the game to focus down to one thing for Dracula to play out. But in the event where we don't have something we want to discard with Blade, we can always play Blade behind Cosmo because Cosmo will suppress our own on reveals just like it suppresses opposing ones. This next deck list, or Zero Dracula, is what I consider to be the fully powered variation of the Series 1 and Series 2 only deck that we started with today. This deck list notably is absent Kazar in favor of just playing individually larger one-cost cards, in part because Zero being able to wipe the abilities off of things makes things like Titania and Ebony Maw a lot more appealing to play. Because we have Zero, we also get to leverage Red Skull as a larger thing to 
discard to Dracula, but then we are still leveraging armor as well as Cosmo to be able to protect our big one drops in key situations against opposing Killmonger. If you're looking to budget out some of the series three and four cards in this deck, Maximus can definitely be replaced by Swordmaster and Titania can be subbed out for a Rocket Raccoon. Zero and Red Skull, however, I think are really important to be able to play this variation compared to the budget list that we looked at moments ago. And if you lose Zero, I think Ebony Maw also has to go because if we can't mitigate his downside in some games, Ebony Maw just isn't quite powerful enough to be playing. This next deck list has some parallels to the Zero Dracula list that we looked at a moment ago, but it's eschewing the one drop swarm package at the bottom end for a variety of different bigger things to be playing out in the final turns. This build in particular is leaning into the Zero theme a little bit more heavily, playing not only Red Skull, but also Typhoid Mary and Destroyer as other cards that are excellent choices to wipe detrimental effects off of. Enchantress serves as another means to get rid of detrimental ongoing effects from Mary and Red Skull, and Cosmo works double time in this archetype, not only shutting down our opponent's cards, but also making it so the Destroyer doesn't blow up our board. One piece of synergy that's quite fantastic in this deck list is just how tricky Sunspot can be to play around for your opponent. When you pass on turn five, absorbing five energy into the Sunspot, your turn six could just be Infinite to add 20 stats to the board, but it could also be a one energy She-Hulk alongside a copy of Taskmaster to put 20 power into play still, but split up over multiple locations. This Zabu Ghost Rider Dracula deck is not only one of my favorite Zabu decks, but it's also my favorite Dracula deck. We have Infinite, Giganto, Chavez, and Apocalypse as all chunky things that we can discard to Dracula on the last turn of the game, as well as flip into play directly out of our deck thanks to Jubilee. Zabu enables us to do very silly things with multiple four energy plays in the turn, and an end game scenario that this deck often ends up in is we will Hellcow discarding Apocalypse plus a large unit such as Giganto or Infinite, and then Ghost Rider will bring the large unit back into play, leaving just Apocalypse in our hand for Dracula to discard at the end of the game, going up to 16 points worth of stats. Omega Red is a cheeky, wonderful card in this deck as well, because thanks to Jubilee and Dracula, we'll generally have one path with a lot of stats in it, and sliding Omega Red into that path allows us to redistribute some of that power across the rest of the board. As far as card substitutions go in this deck, I think Dracula, Ghost Rider, and Hellcow are all required for this deck to operate anywhere close to maximum efficiency. Omega Red, while cheeky and fun, can definitely be replaced with another four energy card of your choosing, and Giganto can definitely be substituted for another high power card, such as something like Red Skull or even Hulk if you're working with a more limited Marvel Snap collection. Our final Dracula deck list today is one that is all in on the discarding theme. In addition to Dracula, we have Blade, Colleen Wing, Moon Knight, Lady Sif, Swordmaster, and Hellcow that all discard cards from our hand. Apocalypse, as highlighted before, is one of our payoffs for discarding cards, getting four points of stats larger every time that happens. Swarm is another of these. When Swarm gets discarded, it gets returned to our hand for zero energy and duplicates. These free swarms work quite well with Lockjaw, who exists in this deck to cycle out even more things to discard stuff from our hand. When you play something out to the lockjaw path, it swaps it with a random card in our deck. We can play our free swarms here or our cards that are discarding cards to get even more cards that discard cards into play. In addition to Dracula eventually discarding a massively large apocalypse from our hand, this deck looks to win its other path with Morbius, who gets plus two stats for each card that we've discarded over the course of the game. Chavez at the top end of this deck helps us draw draw all of our bottom end a little bit more consistently in the early turns and acts as an additional stat stick that we can discard to Dracula should we feel the need to play Apocalypse out onto the board directly for his stat line on the final turn of the game. 
As far as substitutions go in this deck, unfortunately, a lot of the slots are pretty tight because you need a critical mass of discard to really make this deck work. The one card that's really replaceable is Moon Knight, who can be substituted for Gambit because that is another three energy card that happens to discard a card from our hand when it comes into play. Hopefully after today's video, you have some excellent ideas on how you can go about leveraging Dracula in your own Marvel Snap collection. I would love to hear in the comments down below, not only what decks you've been enjoying Dracula in, but also what other cards should I consider making ultimate deck guide like this for in the future. As always, if you enjoyed any of my insights or if you learned something from this video, snap that like button to help this content reach more people at absolutely no cost to yourself. And if you happen to be new here, thanks for making it all the way through to the end of the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. I post Marvel Snap guides like this, as well as deck highlights, other tidbits here seven days a week, and I'd love to see you back again sometime. Happy snapping, folks, and hopefully see you back again tomorrow.